Mr. Pie King, our gecko fist of the Mud Palace. Here we go, skating way in my ark, in my mind palace for all of you to enjoy, to experience, to remember all that you have forgotten. What is there that's brooding behind your mind? Only you know, you remember, and here we go, let me help how I can. <laughs> so, hello, 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 and welcome back to the Scheming Mind Palace. I am your host, the True Party King, as always, welcoming you to a familiar location within a new location. <laughs> Here to talk about the question of how do we remember everything? Everything. Let's delve into it. Since last week we talked about what is there to remember, let's talk about how to remember. Because that is very important. If you're going to remember something, it's important to know how to do it. <laughs> and to talk about that within the Mind Palace, we must start our journey in ancient Greece, where the Greek philosophers would memorize three plus hour long speeches by mapping different points of their speech to different landmarks along perhaps a journey that they would often take from, let's say, their home to the theater or within their own house that they would walk along and walk around and basically have different topics mapped to different locations in the house and then of those subtopics they would map those subtopics to sub elements in those rooms and i'll be definitely delving more into that in the present but first to continue the past i must talk about one of my favorite shows sherlock by or directed, not directed, but starring Mr. Cumberbatch himself. And this show is important because, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to spoil Sherlock if you haven't seen it already. <laughs> if you haven't, definitely check it out. But this is, I think, from the third season where there is this supervillain of sorts who has dirt on all the politicians, everyone. And people are like, how does he have all this information? How does he keep pulling it out? And when they would show him like rifling through like these file cabinets, of like, oh yes, here is, here is the document that shows that that dirty thing your husband did, chamber woman, or I, I forget what, what they're called in parliament. But... Yeah, so they were wondering, like, where is this room where all of his files? Gotta find the files, gotta find the files. And eventually he shows Sherlock, like, here is the room. And it's just a blank white room. And he shows, like, oh, I just sat in this chair in this blank white room. And remember. I remember everything. Through the mind power. Through the mind palace methodology, he was able to remember every single piece of dirt on all these people. So there was no way that all of this evidence could be destroyed unless that guy was killed. So that's what he did. <laughs> Fucking shot him right in the head. What a, what a great twist. 
violence. Normally Sherlock is not that kind of violent, but this time I think he was uh, kind of pushed to the brink. So, moving on from that, I then have to talk about the true cycle. The true cycle within my own personal past was an event where I I basically had to excavate about two decades worth of stuff from my childhood, from my parents' history in this building because we wanted to rent out the basement to a tenant. And it was a trial and a half. Oh my god, you have no idea. Literally, just just so much stuff. So much stuff. And because of the fact there was so much stuff, there was such a deep urge within my parents to just throw out, throw out, throw out, throw out, throw out. I was like, no, all this stuff is not ending up in the ocean or some landfill. I don't want some dolphin choking on this, (laughs) this thing that I like this crossbow that I bought in college from all these college parties, for example. So I was like, no, I want it all to be as utilized as possible but how do i do that how do i use all this stuff this seemingly disparate things from all walks of my personal history well i even though i hadn't used the name mind policy yet i knew that i wanted to make a space where everything is visible Everything from my past, from my mind, was made visible. So, elements from my past that sort of inspire memories, inspire facts that I had forgotten forever, would be on display. And because of the fact that it's a physical space, you can edit it, move it, transmute it remove things that you think uh maybe i don't need to remember that (laughs) or you know those those memories should probably get close together let's move that over there those are all things that are possible within a mind within this architectural archetype that basically is a physical representation of the inner mind palace so from there I would talk about the now of the mind palace in which I had to utilize this memorization technique to to take and pass probably the most difficult exam of my entire life and when I tell you I've taken some difficult exams trust me this fucking blew them all out of the water i've i had a master's in architecture from one of the best design schools in the country master's uh bachelor's in mathematics from one of the top mathematics like top 10 mathematics universities in the united states and this gosh darn agricultural exam was way harder than all those things because it was an oral italian exam so I had to not only memorize all of these words that I'd never known before in Italian, because my Italian is, eh, could definitely use some work, <laughs> but I had to present it orally in front of five grumpy Italian people that actively wanted to fail me. They did not want me to pass because they saw me as just some, some rich kid who was using the fact that when you pass this exam, you get some some juicy tax breaks on your agricultural properties and they weren't entirely wrong but i still i still felt a just like the main reason why we started the exam was for these tax breaks but i still had a deep desire to learn how to grow food learn how to farm manage the farms and be able to own this property 
behind me, which I'm now going to be revealing. Because uh, not only was, ex was this exam the hardest, but it had the highest stakes. If I did not pass this exam, this beautiful old property behind me, we would have likely had to default on it and give up this property and all the forests that I have been enjoying inhabiting because of the fact that uh, it's, the taxes in Italy are absolutely insane. They are absolutely insane. But if you're a farm, you basically pay almost no taxes. So it was one of the main reasons why we were able to uh, even able to afford this place. So, as a result, they were some high stakes, but through the Mind Palace, I was able to finally pass this exam, and I can officially say I am certified as a YAP in Agricultura uh, 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 in, in, Oh my god, wow, I can't believe I've actually forgotten. Independente Agricultura Professionale for YAP. And I can also recite a bit more of what I remember from the top of my head. Like the Maliatie, which are basically the infections of sorts that the olive trees can take in and prevent you know, them from being productive trees. Quelli Maliatie e the uh, batteri insecticidi e i, uh, i fungi. I fungi e i occhi di pavone, un tipo di malattia che uh, fare quelli uh, punti neri. Uh, oh wow, I'm, I'm a bit rusty. Uh, this exam was about a month ago, I will admit. Ma quelli mosche di pavone è una forma di insetto che uh, che i, uh, i madri di, ins di uh, insetti vanno dentro gli olivi e mettono i, uh, i larvi e dopo i uh, rogna è un tipo di cacro di Olivi e forme quando non pulire i forbici quando fare potatura dei olivi. Basically, I just recited all that from the top of my head. Boom. But the way I was able to recite that was by mapping, and I'll definitely throw it up over here, mapping out the different areas of the kitchen of the house out in Italy that I was inhabiting to those different areas of study and then subcategorizing them within that room. For example, and I'll definitely be throwing up some bunch of other ones too. So yeah, that was a definitely very helpful and productive way of memorizing all of this information. So from there, I would love to, before moving on to the next present moment, show how I sketched out today's episode. Because I didn't just write out point, 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 point. I also diagrammed it with a mind palace, which I'll be leaving up over here. Two, probably the home that I have memorized the most my place out in Tribeca that oh oh boy oh boy 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 it is such a wonderful place so many memories I've been there for decades and I decided to basically map out the different topics of today's episode to the different spaces in this house in this apartment so starting from entering from the stairwell I moved into the uh, moved into the guest room which is designated by the Greek 
topic. Then there was uh, the Sherlock part, which I designated to the uh, the bathroom, my bathroom. Then from there, I, as you can see, as you can see from the bathroom of Sherlock, I then went to my bedroom where we're talking about the true cycle. Then from there, mosey on over to the kitchen where I just talked about the op exam. Next, we'll be going to the dining table where I'll be talking about the official architectural archetype of the mind palace that I am developing in the present. Because this archetype isn't just the thing that I developed in the true cycle of like, oh, we're going to map physical elements to the space. I needed something a bit deeper than that. What brings people into that space over and over and over again? And for me, the realization of that was I needed something that would grow with you while you're meditating in this space. So while you are growing, you grow with your plants or perhaps fungi, which I recently decided is a, is a lovely other addition if the space of the Mayan Palace you're choosing isn't super well lit. Fungi is an amazing alternative. They don't require almost any sunlight. In fact, they would prefer to not have much sunlight at all. So the idea of incorporating plants into the space allows for this transformational quality because in this space that I've incorporated with a lot of glow paints, you have during the daytime your plants growing, taking in sunlight, all those sorts of nutrients. And then at night, after they've absorbed all the sunlight, suddenly this space that was normally used to help grow you food or other things, suddenly is glowing. It's suddenly just radiating this ethereal power that draws you in to it. And within that space, it draws you to meditate and refine your mind palace. Because the more you enter the space over and over again, the more deeply rooted all these things you want to memorize become memorized. And then once they're memorized, perhaps you can add on, add on more, add on more, add on more, add on more, which we will talk about in a bit but from there we will move on to the future of the mind palace the future of the mind palace is a business which i have recently begun um, filing a trademark for the mind palace and forming an llc so it is going to be a legitimate business where i'm planning to sell courses videos other things to help transform you into someone who can remember everything can grow with nature become truly independent and if that's interesting to you if that interests you at all great well you can always hop on i'm uh, i still am working on the website i will admit it is not fully formed yet but when it is, I'll definitely be blowing it up all over my Instagram and other sites. Once, you know, the trademark and everything has been filed, it'll be boom, ready to go. So from there, from that business, we go into the further future where we remember everything. And when we remember everything, we remember things we didn't even fathom that we could remember, including our past lives, including breaking the veil 
of forgetting because we have remembered so much. The only thing left to remember are things beyond our lifetime. <laughs> and once you've gotten that far, once you have remembered beyond the veil of forgetting, we have to move on to the food house. The element after the future and before the past. The point in time that connects the two in perpendicularity to the now. So, the Futaust is once we welcome oneness, once we welcome remembering elements from even our past lives, and we break through the veil, we will become the ancient Greeks. We will become the ancient Greeks. See, are they even ancient? They're only ancient in respect to our linear idea of time. But once we break that, once we realize that time is cyclical, we realize, oh, we are the ancient Greeks who created the mind palace. And just like Noah's Ark, just like the pyramids of Giza, we forget that we did it at all because to become the ancient Greeks and create the mind palace because we've already utilized the mind palace to remember so much that we become the ancient Greeks would take away from becoming those ancients. Ancients. <laughs> so we forget because it's fun, because we enjoy it more than anything. So I hope you've enjoyed this delving into the Mind Palace once again. Now that I have showcased just what the mind palace can do for you and is still doing for me like i won't i'm not going to present this like oh i am this super genius who has remembered everything i have perfect memory and have remembered all of my past lives like when i was a dog or when i was gandhi i don't know like whatever like i'm not going to pretend like i'm this perfect person this guru of sorts all i'm doing is presenting something that i am enjoying that i am learning from myself and am really excited to share with others because the way i see it if i know everything if i've memorized everything if i am this superhuman then it's not going to be fun to teach these things anymore and i'm not going to want to do it but i want to do other things so don't don't see this as me trying to impose some sort of like superiority over others because the way i see it once we've all broken through the veil because we've all utilized the mind palace it's not going to be through me the mind palace is greater than me and i want it to be greater than me i'm building it to be greater than me i would love it if the mind palace becomes so big that bootleg mind palaces like mental palace mental castle <laughs> get created and perhaps they do an even better job of teaching the ways of the mind palace than i and if they do i would love to learn from them because we're all in this together because we are all one any individual that can exceed my my grasp of the mind palace my movements through the mind palace if they can traverse it better than i that's beautiful i am so excited that would show that i'm a great teacher if i'm able to teach better than i do but anyways that's enough of that 
This is the True Party King signing off once again. It was lovely talking to you from the property of Fornacella from Ville Ferrano. I'm very much looking forward to this not being in a, an abandoned structure, but actually being sort of the gem, the, the hidden gem of this entire property. Because I will be showing you some panoramic views. Like this, this spot was worth the fact that I literally wasted like a year of my life on that exam. It was worth it. And it was worth building the mind palace to pass this exam. Ah, what a trip. Anyways, Party King signing off.